What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17 beta 7 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. And this comes just one week after the release of beta 6. Now along with this update, Apple also released beta 7 for iPadOS 17, watchOS 10, and tvOS 17. And Apple did also release macOS Sonoma beta 6, HomePod OS 17 beta 6, and macOS Ventura 13.6 RC. So a lot of releases today, but of course in this video we are focusing on iOS 17 beta 7. And you can see here the update came in just under 700 megabytes. It came in at 664.9 megabytes on my 14 Pro Max. Now if you head over and check out the new build number, this one was pretty surprising because as you can see, it is now 21A5311. A. So we went from a C at the end of the build number on the previous beta to now an A at the end of the build number, which indicates we are very close to an RC and then eventually a final release. Now, if we go back and check out the modem firmware, we do also have an update here. So it was 2.08.01 for the past two betas, but now we have a minor update there to the modem firmware to 2.08.02. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17 at beta seven? And first off, this is a beta seven, so I would not expect a ton of new features or changes Changes, but we do have a few minor ones that I want to discuss. So first off, seems like lately a lot of the new features surround the phone application. So in beta six, the big news was that the end call button, that red button was moved to the middle on the main phone screen. And now in beta seven, when you pull up the keypad in the phone application, the end call button is in the middle here as well. So to make it more cohesive, this has also been centered before on beta six, the end call button, when you have the keypad pulled up was over here to the right and it looked really weird with the end call button the main screen end call button in the center so thankfully that has been fixed with this new update now we also have a change to something that was pretty controversial last week in beta 6 and that was that when you muted your device there was no haptic feedback but now in beta 7 that haptic feedback not only returns when you mute your device but it also has a different vibration pattern. Like the haptic feedback vibration pattern is different. And 95Mac is saying that this could be hinting at the action button coming in iPhone 15 Pro. And I can actually see that it is a little bit more prominent and just kind of more like it tells you more that you are switching into a mute mode, like into silent mode. So that's going to be what you need since you're not, you know, moving a switch, you're actually pressing a button on the iPhone 15 Pro. So this change in iOS 17 beta 7 could basically confirm that feature coming on the iPhone 15 Pro. The Discord stickers have finally been fixed in beta seven. So if you're in the Apple Den server on Discord, which you should be, you will notice that now when you go to the stickers right here, when you tap here and then go to stickers, all the stickers show up just as intended. So before there was this really weird kind of like green screen type animation over the moving stickers but now that has been fixed with beta seven. Also the most annoying bug I had on beta six has been addressed in beta seven. And that has to do with when you're playing music on the lock screen and you tap to go into the full screen artwork, and then you try to tap to go back. It just wouldn't do that. I can actually show you on my main device now because this absolutely drove me crazy. So if I go ahead and play some music here and then I go to my lock screen, you will notice that I cannot tap to get back. Like you can see this, I, I, there's nothing I can do except for a reboot and it still comes back. I just cannot go back to having this in my, you know, just going back into the music platter. And I also cannot customize my lock screen from here because of this bug. But thankfully that has been addressed here in beta seven. Now, if you had issues with iCloud backups, that appears to be fixed as well. I did not have that personally, but I did see some people mentioning issues with iCloud backups. So that should be back to working as usual. Also with Apple Music. So I did not have any issues with Apple Music, but some people are saying that there were issues with the service and that should be addressed here in beta seven, as somebody pointed out on Twitter or X. Now, something else I found pretty interesting here is that if you go into your settings, general and software update after updating to beta seven, you will notice that the beta options are no longer there. And they did appear for me briefly 
a little bit earlier, but it showed beta updates off. It didn't even give me the option to choose between developer or public beta. So I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm sure this will fix itself over the air before the next update, but I find that to be quite interesting. Now, as far as the release notes go, there are quite a few resolved issues that are mentioned in the documentation. But the thing to keep in mind here is that Apple does leave a lot of the resolved issues and just all of these, you know, resolved issues, known issues, they leave all of that in there from previous betas as well. So it's kind of hard sometimes to be able to tell what's actually new and what's actually been resolved in beta seven specifically. But nonetheless, there are quite a few resolved issues in here. So I would expect this to be even better than beta six, which beta six was the one that fixed a ton of bugs. A lot of issues got resolved with beta six, and I would expect beta seven to not have as many as beta six, but you should notice more resolved issues with beta seven and just an overall more enjoyable, less buggy experience, especially given the fact that we are on an A build number. And that leads me right into the performance because I would also expect the raw performance to be improved. Like we went from a C build at the end to an A at the end of the build number. A is usually reserved for like near final release or the final release. So I would expect the performance overall to be really good here on beta seven as we are closing in on the final release, which is coming up in a little bit, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So I did go ahead and run a Geekbench six test and we scored a 2635 on the single core and a 6755 on the multi-core. So similar scores to what we saw in the previous beta. So you can see on beta six, it was actually slightly higher in both single core and multi-core, but that test was run later on in the week, not the first day of install. So I will go ahead and run another Geekbench 6 test later on in the week and share those results in my Apple Weekly episode on Saturday. But overall performance, I would expect to be pretty similar to beta six, if not a little bit better. And and as far as the battery life goes, I would expect battery life to follow a very similar trend to the performance. I would expect it to improve slightly here going from beta six to seven, but we did see an improvement going from beta four to five and from five to six. So I wouldn't expect it to improve like drastically every single week, but I would expect potentially a minor bump in battery life as well, especially if you were having battery drain issues, like more of a bug related issue. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple, because this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're going into the deep end here. We're going into the final stages of the iOS 17 betas. And there's pretty much two scenarios that I can see playing out here. So scenario one is where we do get a beta eight next week. And then we skip the week of September 4th. And then we get an RC on the week of the 11th. And then a final on the week of the 18th, most likely on the 18th itself. That is scenario one. Scenario two is, especially now that we have an A at the end of the build number on beta seven, is that we can skip two weeks. So we're not gonna see a beta eight on the week of the 28th. We're not gonna see anything on the week of September 4th. And then we get an RC on the week of the 11th and then a final on the 18th. So I would say that either one of those are in play. We're just gonna have to kind of wait and see what happens next week. Now, as far as the RC build, which is gonna come most likely on the week of the 11th, that is dependent on when Apple hosts their fall event where they announce the new iPhone because that's usually when they release the RC build for beta testers. So that could come really any day from the 11th through the 13th, whenever Apple decides to host that event. And then also I will say that after iOS 17 releases to the public that next week, most likely on the 18th, we should see iOS 17.1 betas begin as soon as that same week. So most likely on the 19th through the 21st, one of those few days. So yeah, it's getting tricky, but it's getting exciting because we are very close to the final release of iOS 17 to the general public. Public. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 17 videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.